everyone. So today's lesson is going to be another recap of one of our leisure chapters. Uh, and today we are doing holidays and travel. So same format as last time. Uh, pause the video, date, title and task. And then there are four pictures. You need to put them in the correct order and add in as many facts as you can. Here's our correct order. Um, we're looking at holy days in the medieval era with Plough Monday, um, which if you can remember is my favourite one because a plough uh, is that weird wooden implement in the bottom left of the picture. Uh, a plough digs up um, a straight line in a field, really useful for planting because uh, it makes the best use of the space. Um, what they used to do is uh, young men would dress up and they'd go house to house knocking on doors asking for food or money and if they were refused they would plow up your front garden which obviously is Halloween so uh, I just love the fact that it still exists today and when people say oh Halloween's an American tradition you can now turn around and say oh well actually it's an ancient British classic. Then we move on to the Grand Tour in the early modern era, uh, which was for rich men to finish their education. And then in the modern era, we go to trains and planes, which is something we don't really think about anymore. It's just something that happens. Uh, but they were revolutionary in their time, like a train uh, made getting to places in England so much quicker and it massively expanded trade and towns because all people wanted their houses and factories to be built near railway stations and planes opened up pretty much the entire world to tourism and will forever impact the economies of all of those countries. Okay so I'm going to ask you to have a very brief read through the holiday and travel chapter in the textbook. Um, I would also suggest we spent a lot of time and to be honest this lesson also really focuses on holidays um, and I feel like we've kind of neglected the travel aspect of it uh, so you might just want to make some very very brief notes specifically about travel uh, particularly for the modern era it talks about train times and things like that just so we've covered all bases so I recommend about 10 minutes Pause the video, read the second chapter, which is about holidays and travel, and make some very brief notes about travel specifically. So we'll just do a very quick recap of the separate eras, um, just so you can enjoy my Photoshop skills. So in the medieval era, we have holy days, which are religious in focus, hence the name. The biggest one was Mother's Night, which is around the 25th of December, and it marks the start of the Anglo-Saxon year. So uh, it's a funny note in history that every time a new religion comes, they adopt the previous customs. That's why we have Christmas, which is supposedly Jesus's birth on the 25th of December. There's no real evidence for this, just the most popular celebration was Mother's Night and it just slotted in nicely um, for the new religion. You've got Blood Month that celebrates harvest time. Christmas Eve to Twelfth Night, which is the 6th of January, uh, which includes the Lord of the Manor giving boxes of presents to his workers, which is why the day after Christmas is known as Boxing Day. Then you get Oliver Cromwell, uh, he's a Puritan and he's Lord Protector, technically not King, but did the same job uh, because he cut off the King's head, uh, which, yeah, didn't, didn't work out too well for Cromwell in the end, but he was Lord Protector for a fair few years. Uh, and he and his Puritan Parliament bans Christmas as it's too frivolous or excessive. Uh, but the rich could still undertake pilgrimages to holy places like where Thomas Beckett dies in Canterbury. And if you really scrutinise that medieval picture, you might see something that's a bit off. Because uh, 
fun fact. Well, I think it's fun. I mean, it's a bit weird. But yeah, fun fact about Mr. Ferguson is that his great, great, great times 27 uh, grandfather was one of the knights that actually murdered Thomas Beckett um, in Canterbury. So uh, there might be something fun to bring up when, maybe not when he's in a bad mood, but, you know, live, liven it up a bit. <laughs> yeah, I've got too much time on my hands. So we'll move very quickly uh, to the early modern era of the Grand Tour. So Holy Days do still exist. It's essential that you remember that. Um, it's only the rich people that can go on Grand Tour. It's not like in the early modern era, no one but the rich went on holiday. It doesn't work like that. Um, but your course wants you to focus on the Grand Tour. It's for rich young men to complete their education. Uh, so at the time, the only things you could study at university was history, classical history and philosophy. It's led by a bear leader. And they would go and see the ancient sites like the Colosseum and the Vatican. So they've learned about all this stuff at university and now they get a chance to kind of go and see it for themselves. Uh, and I've just put a picture at the bottom um, of Pompeii, which is those stone people. So a volcano erupted in 79 AD and eventually they found the site and there were all these hollows. So they decided to pour concrete in all these hollows and it turns out they're like the hollow spaces where bodies were incinerated pretty much instantly. Um, so I guess it's one of the more morbid sites of the Grand Tour, but it's still quite interesting. And men collected mementos, uh, as well as drinking, gambling and womanising. But it's where we get guidebooks for the first time. So uh, the early version of TripAdvisor uh, starts with the Grand Tour, which is quite cool. Okay, so I've deliberately skipped um, the modern era, because that's what I want you guys to focus on today. So we've got another one of these tables that you're going to need to do. Um, you to need at least a whole side of A4, just like last time. Um, but your focus should be on facts for the modern section. The pause the video, I'm estimating about 15 minutes again to fill out this table. Okay, so let's go through my examples. So in the medieval era, You've got holidays or holy days like Plough Monday, Christmas Eve, Blood Month. Uh, everyone goes on these. The rich can go on pilgrimages. Uh, people go on holidays or holy days for religious reasons. Uh, how are they celebrated? Um, each different holy day has got its own tradition. So Boxing Day is the Lord giving gifts and boxes. Uh, at Easter time, poor people give the Lord eggs and he'll make them a meal. And they all involve some sort of decoration, normally with flowers, and they all involve some sort of game. Uh, where did they go and how did they get there? So they were in their own villages um, and they got there with horses or walking. In the early modern era, uh, holy days are still a thing, but the Grand Tour is popular for rich people. Uh, so everyone goes to holy days, but it's only rich young men that go on the Grand Tour. Now they can take their families and servants. Um, but predominantly it is just for rich young men. And the purpose of these holidays are for religion, uh, to finish their education, to see sites. Uh, and crucially, in the Elizabethan era, you can bring in some of your extra knowledge about people travelling to beg throughout the kingdom. Uh, they're celebrated, same as in the medieval era, uh, but the grand tour involves shopping, drinking, sightseeing, womanising. Uh, where did they go? So exactly the same again for Holy Days. But the Grand Tour is in Europe, Europe only, uh, including Rome, Venice and France, just to name a few places. In the modern era, um, there's two kind of things your schema work focuses on. Uh, butlins and caravan holidays and package holidays. And um, pretty much everyone goes on holiday now. Uh, still, but 75% of holidays are still taken in the UK. So why did people go on holiday? Uh, well, it's important to note it first started as wakes weeks, where each factory would have a week off to clean equipment, 
uh, and that kind of led to a six week natural summer holiday, which is why we still have six weeks in summer. Woo! You got bank holiday acts, which meant people had more free time. Uh, Holidays with Pay Act gave people a paid holiday for the first time ever, so they weren't losing any money if they went on holiday. And you've got cheap airlines like Laker Airways to America um, that opened up huge sections of the world. And nowadays it can be for any reason. Uh, It can be for religion, it could be for volunteering, or it could even be for the food. And we can now go anywhere, um, quite literally anywhere, although 75% of holidays are still taken in the UK. So pause the video and note down anything you are missing. Okay, so we have two practice questions for you today. Uh, You must do both of them. So the first one is a question three for five marks. You should describe the holiday trends in the 20th century. Now, I've given you some ideas of things to think about. Uh, There's way too many things here that you could possibly be able to include. Um, So they're just some ideas. So some holiday trends are holiday camps like Butlins, cheap flights, package holidays, the ease of booking online, uh, wakes weeks, and bank holidays meant long weekends away. I'd then like you to try a question four, which is worth nine marks. And I'd like you to explain why holiday camps increased in popularity in the 20th century. Uh, So for this, as always, we need three reasons. But crucially, you need to focus on your explanation. So why do these lead to an increase in popularity? So you'll need to look at contextual reasons. So the war has ended. Um, People want more fresh air, healthier lifestyle. What do they have to offer? Talk about red coats, talk about the competitions. And you need to explain links between transport uh, and things like national parks. So most holiday camps are on a railway line or on a main motorway or near a national park. You, You need to explain why that means they are more popular. And then finally, please make sure you email me those questions for my register and you complete the Show My Homework quiz. Uh, Hopefully I'll see you soon. Uh, If not, watch out for more recorded fun. Anyway, bye.